Religion has been a factor in characterizing an individual's belief in his or her response to what is happening around them. And in Africa, religion plays a huge role to most people. And with three main religions in the African continent, Islam occupies 42%, Christianity occupies 49% and traditional faith occupies only 8% in the continent. In the past 15 years, there has been an emergence of Christianity dominations in the African continent, all with the main aim of delivering people to God through Jesus Christ. They all traveled and started churches across the continent in all countries. They played a huge role on how Africans interact with people outside our continent and even how we live. It has made us humble, forgiving and with patience in what we are striving for. But all this has made us naive and easy targets to people who use the name of God and the faith of Africans to God to their own advantage. The rise of false prophets who don't value humility, compassion, selfless service and servant leadership are replaced with image consciousness and enlargement of personal ministry influence at whatever cost. And it has led to the rise of number of people who spend most of their time in churches praying rather than balancing it with the activities that create earnings that support their livelihood. The Bible also clearly teaches that a false balance is an abomination to God. So I believe that in as much as we we must make sure that we are connected to God and through through prayer, yes, of course, we have to really connect with God. But we also have to also work. Yeah. The Bible teaches us that we actually have to work. Yeah. Because it says that he will bless the fruits of our hands. So, I mean, what you do with your hands is what God will bless. Many of these false prophets are taking advantage of numerous challenges faced by a continent that is undergoing rapid social transformation. The background of good charismatic prophets who have long track records of ministry has made it harder for most ordinary Christians to distinguish false prophets from genuine ones. Even though genuine ones who served well in the past are capable of being sidetracked by fame, success, and pride. And with the exemption of taxes, whereby in most African countries, churches are considered to be public charities, it has made it easy for false prophets to run churches as a source of income by purchasing of lavish properties and investment in material products. And prophets whose intentions are self-centered or evil have been around since biblical times. With a big enough congregation, it's easy for false prophets to milk away enough money for their own benefit or misuse funds meant for public services for own personal family needs. There have been cases where religious leaders are involved in sexual abuse in so many countries in Africa. If you believe that you're a Christian and the Holy Spirit lives in you, yes, and he abides in you and he is with you, then the Holy Spirit himself is supposed to actually guide you to where truth is. Yeah. So if you believe that the Holy Spirit is in you, you'll be guided to, towards that truth. Yeah, I think that's why I'm, I'm very grateful for the family that I am. I'm, I'm in. It's like I've learned all these things and I've seen them for myself in the Bible. What I think is follow the Holy Spirit. He will show you where to go. In a face of difficulty, a poor Christian could expect to get temporary help even from a depraved pastor who would share the little they have. In a continent where the church is growing exponentially faster than in any other period in history, the biblical paradox of both wit and wit growing together is real. It is our responsibility as Christians to raise this issue to the public and to refer back to the scriptures so we can guide more Christians in the right direction. And I encourage, I encourage Christians out there to actually have a specific time of the day where they pray. Yeah, they actually pray and they and read their Bibles and actually commune with God. And they, they should also have things that they're doing because Adam was was put in the garden and God gave him work to do. They cultivate. After this, name the animals. So you see that also it says that we are cursed in a way that we out, out of sweat shall we have our bread. So we actually have to work for the bread if you read the book of Genesis. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Don't forget to drop a comment and share with a friend.